and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this week's video, I'm going to be playing with patina. A few weeks ago, Dixie Belle launched a brand new colour of their patina spray and I created this piece, which caused a little bit of uproar on social media because people were like, why are you painting that? It's so nice, blah, 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 I don't like it, I don't like rust. Um, I'll be honest, this was two pounds from a charity shop and I just thought it would make a really cool project to do with patina, so that's what I did. Anyway, I asked if you wanted to see a longer video. A few of you said yes. So I'm gonna make a longer video using patina to create a really cool rusty star. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Patina. I am definitely no expert when it comes to Patina. Um, some of the other brand ambassadors and Dixie Bell content creators have done fantastic, amazing things with Patina. I haven't played with it an awful lot. Um, and also, let me just say about that bird out there, it's very noisy. Sorry about that. This microphone is super sensitive. It's going to probably pick up a really noisy bird in the background. So in the Dixie Bell Patina range, there's a few different products. I'm just going to tell you the very basics because that's all I know. I'm not going to claim that I am an expert. So recently, Dixie Bell launched a brand new Patina spray in the colour yellow, which is the thing that I'm going to be showing you in this video alongside a few of the other Patina products. So their sprays, which come in a few different colours, I can actually only get two here in the UK. That's one of them, the yellow one. The other one is green. So I can't get the other colour, which is blue. I can't get that one here. We can't get it in the UK uh, due to shipping regulations. So I can get those two, and they're the two that I'm going to use in today's video. So Patina Spray is designed to be used with... Dixie Bell's Patina paints and there's three colours in that range there's copper, bronze and iron so these paints are super highly pigmented they're water based and they've got ground metal in the paint which when you spray the reactor on top of it gives you that natural like crusty rustiness that I've just shown you on the star and depending on which colour of these you use you get a different colour or patina outcome so that's a little bit about patina and the products within the range and I hope that helped kind of understand what they are, what they do and how they work with each other. This is the piece that I painted with those things that I've just shown you and I'm going to show you what I did to get this effect. Like I say, I'm only playing with a small product today. I have got some bigger things lined up to go in the future but it's just a small one today and I will show you the steps of how I achieved this. So you can see this star was already painted. This is actually the colour Peony from the Chalk Mineral Paint range. But I'm just going to give it an undercoat of Coffee Bean. That's a really dark chocolate brown colour. I'm just applying it roughly with a chip brush and sort of stippling it on for a little bit of texture because I always think patina kind of looks a little bit better with lots of texture. So I did two coats of Coffee Bean and let it dry completely. And then you're going to want to stir your patina paints. Make sure you stir them. Very important because that is going to just stir all of those ingredients up and make sure that they haven't separated and gives you the best result. So I'm using three different brushes here. I've got three of the colours that I mentioned earlier, iron, bronze and copper on the go. And although I'm using three separate brushes to apply, I am kind of mixing them up on the star surface. Um, just so that I get a variation in patina because like I mentioned depending on the colour of the metallic paint that you use the colour of patina is going to differ as well. So then let that completely dry your first layer of patina paint let it dry down completely and as you can see I'm going to use a combination of two of these colour sprays I'll link them in the description below so you know exactly what I've used and then I'm going in with the second coat of patina paint. Again, I'm using three separate brushes just so the colours don't mix up too much because I have played with this a little bit. So I know the colour outcome that I'm going to get by using the different colour patinas with the different colour sprays. So, for example, I know that if I spray the blue spray on top of copper paint, it's going to give me that kind of turquoisey colour that copper goes when it is weathered. Equally, I know that when copper is used with the yellow spray activator, then it's going to give me a slightly kind of greener tinge to the yellow patina. 
So that's why I'm using a combination of all of the colours and two sprays to give me a real variation in the colour. But like I used on the metal vase or jar that I showed at the very start, that was only yellow spray used with the three different patina paints. You could just use one colour patina paint and one colour patina spray, but I wanted some variation in the patina on this, and that's why I'm using several different products. Also, it allows me to show you the different outcomes that you can achieve using these different products. So when I was happy with the positioning of all my patina paints, whilst the paint is still wet, this is the most important thing, so your second coat of patina paint needs to be wet when you use the patina spray. And you can adjust the nozzle on the sprays to spray a more finer spray or a more kind of clumped up splatty spray. And again, that alters the look of the patina as well. So I'm just gonna spray the yellow reactor spray all over the top of my wet paint. And I'm just gonna kind of play around with it so you can see in areas I've got more yellow in places than others. So the yellow comes out as more of a, of a true yellow when you spray it on. The other color that I'm using here, you can't really see what's happening with this. And this is because it takes time to react with the patina paint. And some of these colors react in a different way to others, like I mentioned, but I'll show you what I mean in a second. So this is after roughly half an hour to 45 minutes. You can see, I'm putting the camera up close, it's a bit shaky, but you can see the close up and you can see where the different colors are reacting with the different sprays to give you that variation in patina. It's a super cool, really unique finish. And I just let this dry down because I was really happy with how it was. And this is what it looked like after 24 hours. It stopped reacting and I did a couple of really, really close up shots to show you the variation in patina color. You can add a top coat over the top of patina, but because this is a purely decorative item, I'm not gonna bother in this instance. Thank you for watching the video. Hope it was enjoyable. As always, make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, ring the notification bell, and I will catch you next time. Bye.